Hey, God bless you, church. Here we are on a beautiful Monday morning, opening the Word of God. You know, the Scripture tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all Scripture, Genesis to Revelations, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God or is God-breathed. God breathed His Word into approximately 40-something people and they wrote down and we have the word of God. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable to tell us what's right, what's not right, how do we get right, and how do we stay right so that we might prosper in the things of God. So when we open the word of God, it's for a reason and it is to profit us. The word is like picking up well, it's, it's better than the daily newspaper because a lot of that is fake and false and not real. But the Bible, every day when we pick it up, is as if it was printed for us today. So we're going to share some scriptures this morning. I believe that'll be a blessing to you and it's going to help you because that's what the Word wants to do. It wants to edify and comfort and to lift us up so that we can have the life that Jesus talked about in John 10.10, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How do we have that abundant life? Because of the word of God. We take this word that God gives to us and we apply it to our lives. And when we do that, that abundance comes. Amen. I want to share two really strong words in the Bible today. One word is nevertheless. And the negative to that is but. Have you ever had a situation when you were believing for something, but the first thing out of your mouth was but. You're believing for something. You, you have a promise from God and you're believing for something. But if the first thing out of your mouth is but, you're never going to get what it is you're believing for. You know, well, uh, someone, there's a job opening and uh, it'd be really great for you financially and everything. But your comment is, but I don't really have the education for it, but I don't know if I could do it, but, but, but. Well, your but is going to keep you from walking in the promise of God. Because if God promised you that, which he has in his word, that he's going to lift you up, he's going to elevate you, he's going to prosper you, then when you say but... You're, you're nullifying the word of God. I want to look at, at Luke chapter 5. I, I love Luke chapter 5. I love all the Bible, but I like Luke chapter 5. Jesus in his ministry is coming and the crowd is pressing upon him. You need to get a picture of this, that there are thousands upon thousands of people that are following Jesus to listen to him, to see his miracles, and to be healed. And so they are doing this. It's even early in the morning and he comes up to the Lake Genesaret and he sees Peter and his brother, Andrew, and the sons of Zebedee and they fished all night long. Bubba, these people are worn out. And he sees them and he comes and uh, this is not the first encounter that Jesus and Andrew had with, with uh, Jesus. They had met him before. They had seen him. And so he comes and... and uh, Peter and Andrew are washing their nets. Their, their day is over with. They are tired, they are weary, and they have nothing for their efforts. They have no fish. They have nada, nothing. And Jesus comes to them and he says, he gets into Peter's boat uh, and he says, would you just uh, thrust out a little from the shore? Because he needed to get away from the throng of people that were pressing him. And so Peter probably said, hey, it's not doing me any good. Come on in. And so it said Jesus taught from the, from the boat. Peter's there fixing his nets. But then Jesus turns to Peter and he says, Peter. See, Jesus knew everything. Jesus knew that these men had fished all night. He knew there were no fish. He knew that their nets were empty. He knew that the boat didn't have no fish in it. He knew that. But he looks at Peter and he says, Peter launch out into the deep and let down your net for, and the word is called droth, which means a mighty 
overabundant amount. Jesus is telling Peter, Peter, launch out, which means get away into the deep. They don't, they didn't usually fish in the deep. He's taking him to a new place. He's showing him that there's a new place of abundance. And he said, let down your nets. And then he says, and when you do, there's going to be a mighty catch. But the first thing out of Peter's mouth was, but you don't understand. We are fishermen <laughs> and we have fished all night. We're tired. We're weary. Man, it's, it's, it's just not a good morning. But then Peter makes this statement and it changed his life and the lives of millions of people forever. Just one word. And he said, it's, it's not a good time for me right now. Nevertheless, you know, when things look the worst, boy, nevertheless is that magic word. Nevertheless, I'm going to forget all that past. I'm going to forget that we've toiled all night long. I'm going to forget that we have no fish. I'm going to forget that it's not time. It doesn't look like it's time. I'm going to forget that where we fished before. And Peter came to that place and he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. It even said net. It didn't even, I don't, I don't think Peter said, I'm not going to put down all the nets. Let me, I'll just put down a net. Okay. And so, so let down your net for a mighty catch. And so Peter, he does that. And if you've been watching the program on TV, The Chosen, man, it's really a great uh, episode, really great. But it shows Peter and Andrew in the boat, and they, I mean, they have no faith. They're, they're uh, faking it till they make it. Have you ever done that before? Fake it till you make it. And they are throwing out, I mean, they are sitting there, they're disgusted. They're going, what are we doing? My goodness gracious. And they're taking that net, you know, and they throw that big, both of them, and they throw that big old net into the side of the boat. And they're standing there looking at each other going, is this crazy? What in the world? And then all of a sudden, the boat tips over. The net is so full of fish that it starts to sink the boat. And, they, and then the picture is there's a thousand big fish right there in that net. And Peter and Andrew are looking at it and they're going, help! <laughs> the sons of Zebedee are over there in their boat. They ain't got no fish yet. They're, Peter's going, help! Come help us. We got more than we can handle. And then it shows uh, the sons of Zebedee. Boy, here they come. Here they come and bring in their boat. They come out there. And I mean, they, they get that, they pull that, it was hard. They get that net and they put it in the boat and they said the boats began to sink. Both boats, sons of Zebedee's boat and Peter's boat, began to sink. Why did that happen? Number one, God's word was spoken. And God said, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a mighty catch. He meant all of that. All he needed was for someone to not say but, but to say nevertheless, at thy word. That's all he did is at thy word. You know, wherever your situation is right now, you just need to say nevertheless. Yeah, it looks bad. The economy, this uh, COVID-19, the epidemic, the virus. Do I take the shot? Do I not take the shot? Businesses aren't back. Oh, my goodness gracious. But you know, God said... He'd never leave us nor forsake us. He said he'd be with us forever. And he said his word, if we abide in his word, wow. He's the, he's the divine and we're the branches. If we stay in that, if we make him our habitation, then when we find, when we, when we get a word from God, wow. And Peter's word was launch out. Leave that place of comfort. I'm speaking to someone right now. Leave that place of comfort, launch out, 
and I'm going to I'm going to have you go to some place you've never been before. And when you get there, you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper. I just just whoever that's for, just receive that right now. You're wondering what's going on. And I believe God's talking to you and he's, he's saying it's time to launch out. You get you got comfortable. Yeah, you got all the reasons why you can't do that. But if you'll say, but nevertheless, Lord, at thy word, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you today, Father. See, that's 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 what we do. Is it, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Don't lean to your left nor to your right. I was a leaner until I got saved. <laughs> Because we always lean to circumstances and situations and what's going on. But he said, no, just trust in the Lord with all your heart. But it said, Peter believed the word of God. Peter believed the word of God. And, and look at what happened. Peter became a mighty apostle, wrote part of the, the New Testament, walked with Jesus, had revelation of, that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. That all came about because out of his mouth, he said, nevertheless, he, he forgot about all the reasons why not. And he said, nevertheless, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to your word. I'm not going to listen to all this other stuff. I'm going to listen to your word. I'm going to launch out. I'm going to go. I've never been. And I'm going to let down my nets. And then God promised that if he let down his nets, he'd catch a, a mighty catch. Hallelujah. What a great story. You know, and also in John chapter four, there's a beautiful story of a nobleman that heard about Jesus and he came to Jesus about his son who was dying, who was dying. And he said, would you come and heal my son? And Jesus, all Jesus said, go home. Your son is healed. Wow. Wow. I like what it says. The nobleman Believed the word that Jesus spoke. The nobleman believed the word that Jesus spoke and it said, and he departed. That means, hey, no long, no need to stay here any longer. I believe he believed the word that, that Jesus spoke and he departed. Didn't stick around praying and sobbing. No, no, I pray. I hope he did. And he said he went home and they told him that his son was healed the same time that Jesus spoke the word. Thank you, Lord. You know, that same word's alive in us today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus' word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus' promises are the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> Everything about God is Yesterday, today, and forever. His mercy, his grace, his kindness, his faithfulness. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. The word works. The Bible says that he sent his word and it never returns void to him. All we have to do sometimes is speak his word. But we can speak life when we say nevertheless. Or we, or, or we kill it when we say But. Just we need to get our butts out of the way and just say, if God, you said, I'm going to believe your I'm going to believe your word. I'm going to believe for those things that I can't see. I'm going to believe it. it, it you know, if, if I can see it, I already have it. But in the spirit realm, I already possess it. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you've already received them and you shall have them. Wow, there's power in the word. Amen. I want to pray over you for wherever you are right now, that if your butts are holding you back, you would just need to say, nevertheless, at thy word, Lord. Father, I pray this morning, I pray thy kingdom come and thy will be done in all of our lives today, Lord. I, I thank you for the power that's in the word of God. And I thank you for the power when we walk in that word, Lord. So I just pray for those that are hearing today. I pray that they have ears to hear and eyes to see, Lord, and a heart that's receptive to that word. And today can be that day, Lord, for their launch out. Today can be that day, Lord, that they, they say, nevertheless, at thy word. So I praise you, and we just thank you for it today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.